Hello, welcome to Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw. And I'm Ross Sutherland. And we have with us today Dylan Peck, who is with the Friends of the Salem Public Library. We're going to be talking about books, about the library, about all of the ways you can help support your library. And we thought it would be kind of fun to have you in to talk about it because you're young, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it did surprise us. What, what is your position with the Friends of the Salem Public Library? Well, I'm the vice president of the board of the nonprofit, the, the Friends themselves. So I assist our president. Um, I kind of fill in gaps where they exist. So when someone has signed up for a job and maybe they're having some trouble getting it done, maybe they have something going on at work and it's getting in the way of mm -hmm. Friends stuff, I can fill that gap. Or if there's something I have access to that no one else does, I can bring that to the board. I'm kind of a jack of all trades for everybody there. Well, tell us more about all the different things the Friends do for the library. Yeah, because we've already kind of gotten the idea that you have to have Friends of the library to kind of keep it going. Right. Um, we're a source of funding for the library. We're also a place where um, books that have maybe had their time in the collection, um, maybe they're, they're, they're sitting on the shelf, not getting checked out. Um, but there's no need to just recycle them. So mm -hmm. what we do is we take those books that have been withdrawn from the collection and we, we price them reasonably and we sell them to the community. Mm -hmm. um, that way they get kind of a second life and then we have that space in the collection, in Salem Public Library's collection, to add more newer books. You're talking kind of. about a store? Yeah, there's a store actually. <laughs> Some people don't know this. Um, there's a store inside the public library and that's the Friends store. And that's where you'll see those books that have been withdrawn from the collection. We also um, take straight donations from mm -hmm. the public. A lot of times people may be moving into a smaller place or, or they just want to downsize. And we end up with boxes and boxes of people's just personal books. And the same process goes through. We, we price them, we put them in our store. Um, we set some aside for big book sales. We do all kinds of things. Which is the great thing about that store, which is you, it's 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 been curated. I you know mm -hmm. that people go through and pull out the books that are really the books you want to see, and not the dog-eared copies of paperbacks and and so all a lot of those which are good books some of those go to the the bigger book sales as well and of course all the proceeds go to supporting the library right yeah yes. every every dollar goes to um, in some way direct um, direct to the library and they they take it and the librarians who are experts at what they mm -hmm. do use that money um, in whatever way is best and you know they they present that to us and we say that looks great and we we give them um, the money that we've made throughout the year um, and they can fund things like the, the Lucky Day collection and um, sometimes even capital projects like new building expansions or building maintenance, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. We help with that. Because it's a significant, um, you, you raise significant funds with that, mm -hmm. which is really wonderful. Yeah, well, significant is relative. You know, well, so I know, but I, I, I mean, for the size <laughs> of the space, I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. It isn't, you know, it's, it's, it's enough money to support the library in a and that in itself in a, is impressive. In a good way, yeah. I I first learned that you had a project. I don't know. If, did you originate the idea of the fiction only sale? Well, it wasn't my idea, um, <laughs> but I definitely supported it. We we ended <laughs> well, up well, it was a great success, and we'll show you a little <laughs> yeah, video yeah. about that. Because tell us how that came about. Because it was the first time you tried this, right? Yeah. So we we ended up with a pretty big backlog of books that were great books and were definitely books that people were interested in buying. They just weren't able to see the light of day because we have space restrictions. Yeah. So yeah. we ended up with um, quite a few storage units just full of books that were collecting <laughs> dust. Oh my god. Yeah, oh my not gosh. doing anyone any good. Um, <laughs> and so a lot of them were just general fiction. So our president, Jeannie, had the idea to just hold a fiction only sale. Kind of bring people who were fiction lovers out. Um, mm -hmm. And, and just have a one day kind of flash sale and clear out some of that stock, get mm -hmm. those out into the community and take the money that we make from that sale and get that to the library. That way we're not just sitting on stock that could be benefiting somebody. Mm -hmm. I went there for that just to look at how it would work and I wanted to see how it would look. And uh, well, why don't we go there right now, we'll take a little look at the video and show <laughs> you how it went. It was a success. Mm -hmm. This particular sale is to sort of get 
through some of our backlog of fiction. Um, we get a lot of donated fiction from the library, from people around the community, um, and it's, we get so much that it's hard to sell it during our main book sales, which happen twice a year. Um, and so during this sale, we just set out only fiction. So we bring out um, the fiction lovers and they can pick through stuff that hasn't seen the light of day in years sometimes because um, the, you know, they've been in the storage unit. So this way, um, these guys can get cleared out. It makes more space for us for new books. And um, once these are all cleared out, we'll be able to bring in some more varied stuff. So it's not just fiction at the next sale. If somebody wants to get involved, what do they do with, with your organization? That's a great question. Um, we have all kinds of opportunities for people to volunteer. If you're somebody who has uh, just a little bit of time, a couple times a year, you can volunteer at our sales to help us straighten books, bring out more stuff from storage, um, set up, take down, that kind of thing. If you're somebody with time during the day on weekdays, you can volunteer in our store and that will um, help us to sell books from there, which is open year round. So it's kind of a, a regular schedule thing, which is, which is great. And then if you're someone who is good at organizing things, if you're someone who's good at raising money, if you're someone who's good at uh, talking to people and making connections in the community, you can join us on the board. Um, and we're a, a volunteer board. We meet once a month and we organize these sales. We make all the materials that we pass out to people to advertise for the sales, all of that stuff. And so there's really a place for everyone. And if you're somebody who wants to help the library, the Friends is a great way to get involved. Oh, that looks like great fun. Yeah, and Are there were people of all ages there. That's what I really like. Are you going to have more of these uh, sort of uh, specific sales? These Boutique little sales. These yeah. little yes. flash sales. Are you <laughs> going to do the? You going to do this again? I I hope so. Um, it kind of depends on what we get a big stock of. So mm -hmm. it might be fiction. It might be romance. If we do get a mm -hmm. big stock of something like that, that again is just collecting dust. I think this flash sale has been a great way. And why is it so important that? not to have a big stock like of back books like that? Why is it so important to kind of get them through the system? Well, they when they sit in storage like that, um, just kind of doing nothing, um, they they're not benefiting the library. They're they're not benefiting um, the friends. And those books could be in somebody's hands. You know, yeah. like somebody that that has been looking for that particular edition can get their hands on it. Um, yeah. And like I know, for example, one of our volunteers is collecting Pulitzer Prize winners, um, and he was able to find I think four of them oh, wow. that he didn't have on his list at the sale, and those were just sitting in storage. So that's great. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about how you got involved um, volunteering with the Salem Public Library. Well, um, when I graduated college here in Salem, I um, got a job working in a library and just loved it. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of looking for ways to to branch out and use my library experience if I could. And I saw that there was a sale going on at the library, so I volunteered. And um, I got talking with some of the other volunteers and board members, and they suggested I come to a board meeting. Mm. And I did, and it kind of went from there. That's um, great. And that's kind of, that tends to be how people get involved. They have the interest and, and the passion, and it just kind of shows, and you recognize it, and you invite them. And with, with your work, have you ever found any um, unexpected benefits, uh, ways you're having an impact? Well, I think that um, one of my favorite impacts that we have, um, especially with our, our big fall and spring mm -hmm. sales, is the people that come back year after year with their families. Um, and the little kids get really excited, you know, they're, they're rummaging through the children's section or they're just running around. And, and I love seeing little kids with book stacks that are bigger than them. They can barely <laughs> hold it. Um, that, that's my favorite because it kind of reminds me of when I was a little kid and I loved reading and I loved my library and I loved going to sales like that. So it's, it's um, I guess I, I wasn't shocked by it because I knew that little kids and books just they go together if, if they're introduced in the right way. Well, I've got a great story for you. We, um, at the Bush House Museum, we had a group of kids there, and we were in Mr. Bush's library, and this little girl looks at me and she goes, I wish I could have a library. And oh. it was the perfect opening, and oh. I said, well, you know, you don't have to have hundreds of books to have a library. Even if you just have one book, you can have a library. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was so wonderful because kids Kids sometimes need that kind of permission or just that perspective to, mm. to get involved with things. Exactly. They, they want to feel that it's something that's really theirs and that people are happy that they have it. And they, right. and they can 
create it as they go along, add to it. And, and you and if there's if there are kids who don't maybe they don't have a lot of things they own, you know, maybe they share a bedroom and they share a bike or whatever, they can own a book and that's their book and that's their library. Yeah. And that's that's an important thing too, I think. What if somebody wants to volunteer with the Friends of Salem Public Library, um, how do they get involved? Well, it's really easy, luckily, because we're always looking for volunteers. Um, <laughs> the, uh, our website is the splfriends.org, and from there you can kind of see information about volunteering, and there's a big variety of ways they can volunteer, too. What kinds of things could they find themselves involved? Well, if you're the kind of person that um, is really, really busy in your day-to-day -day and you only have a few times a year when you can volunteer, our book sales are a great place to do that. Mm -hmm. You can come in, straighten books, talk to people, help them find authors, that kind of stuff. Very easy, very low-key, low commitment. Um, and if you're somebody who has a lot of time, like during the weekdays when most people are at work, mm -hmm. um, our store has to be staffed by somebody, right? Mm -hmm. So we yeah. have volunteers that staff the store. Um, if you're interested in just talking to people and, and kind of being in a calm environment with book people, that's another <laughs> great way to do it. Um, and then if you're someone with particular expertise or someone who's interested in really being a part of the Friends, um, you can email us or call us and we can talk to you about possibly being on the board or at least coming to our meetings, which sure. are open to the public if somebody's interested. Um, and uh, in that way, kind of helping to shape the future of the Friends. Well, from your description of it, it sounds like a lot of fun no yeah. matter what <laughs> you're doing. And I'm so glad you were able to come in to tell us about this today. And I was very happy that when I saw the variety of people showing up, ooing and aahing over the <laughs> books that you needed to move. Mm -hmm. uh, they had their chance to do that, and I hope they have that chance in the future. Me too. And thank you for joining us today on Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw. And I'm Ross Sutherland. We'll see you again.